Hi guys. So today we're going to start off a new unit by looking at a parent function and again looking at transformations. So while it's a new parent function, hopefully the transformations at least are pretty familiar for you guys. So the parent function we're going to look at today is an example of a polynomial, uh, and that is the cubic parent function, y equals x cubed. So to start, to see what this graph looks like, we're going to plug in some values to a table. So for example, if I plug in 0 for x, 0 cubed would give me a y value of 0. If I plug in 1, 1 cubed would give me a y value of 1. Negative 1, on the other hand, would give me a y value of negative 1. If I plug in 2, 2 cubed is 8. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So there's a few points on this graph so you can start to see the shape. And we're not going to pick many more x values besides those, just because I think about if you did 3, 3 cubed is 27. So that graph is going to get really tall really quickly. And you can see the shape of this graph, how it kind of bends right there as it goes uh, towards the origin. Now that point where it's bending right there um, actually has a special name. That point is called the point of inflection. And the point of inflection is where your graph changes concavity. So by concavity, remember we talked about how like your parabolas, when they opened up, they were concave up. When they opened down, they were concave down. So this graph has a little bit of a curve to where it's kind of bending up here, but then once it reaches this point, it's bending down. So where your graph changes is called the point of inflection. Now that point for us, it's really kind of like our vertex for uh, quadratics in terms of graphing. Because it's at 0, 0 on the parent, that's the, gra that's the point that we're going to translate, and then we're going to follow our pattern based off of that point of inflection. So we're going to treat it like a vertex. It's not really the vertex, though. All right, then characteristics, just going over some of the same vocab we've been looking at. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range is negative infinity to infinity. This graph is increasing, so as we look left to right, the y values are getting larger on the entire function. And it is decreasing nowhere. It is always increasing. Positive intervals are different than increasing intervals, and this is something that's been missed a lot this year. Positive intervals is when my graph is above the axis. So the positive intervals of, of my graph is that section right there, which is from 0 to infinity. Now we use a parenthesis on 0 because if it's actually 0, it's 0. It's not actually positive. So negative, then, is where this graph is below the axis, which is this part right here. So this graph is negative from negative infinity to 0. Symmetry, so symmetry we talked about like with parabolas, for example. Our parent function had symmetry on the y-axis. Now this graph actually has a special kind of symmetry that's called origin symmetry. And what that means it looks like is basically looks like it's reflected over the x and the y. So if I were to reflect this over the y and then also reflect it over the x, it would end up in the same place. And we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but that actually has a special name. That means that this is actually an odd function if it has origin symmetry. And we'll get into that a little bit more next class. Now, extreme left, you remember we talked about our relative mins and maxes and our global mins and maxes? We'll talk about this again next class um, when we look at some more polynomials. But one thing to know here, where this graph kind of turns, that's not a very good shape, but these little cubic functions, how they kind of turn like that, that point where it turns is not a relative min or maximum because your graph is not changing from increasing to decreasing. So the cubic parent function does not have any extrema on it. No relative or uh, global mins or maxes. And then we'll look at end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, let's look at what y is doing. And as x approaches positive infinity, let's look at what y is doing. While as x approaches negative infinity, my y's are going down. As x approaches positive infinity, my y's are going up and going towards positive infinity. So that's just a review of some of the vocab we've been using so far this year, and then looking at the cubic parent function. So now we're going to look at transformations to that function. And this chart should look pretty familiar by this point in the year. So f of x minus h is a shift right. f of x plus h is a shift left. What that looks like on the cubic function 
if it's inside the parentheses, then it's going to go right. X plus H inside the parentheses would go left. So in the parentheses is all of our horizontal transformations. That B value that's inside the parentheses is the horizontal stretch or compression. And remember, these are backwards. So if it's in between 0 and 1, that is a horizontal stretch. So something like 1 half or 3 fourths, that would be a horizontal stretch. Whereas if it's greater than 1, it's a horizontal compression. And what that would look like on your graph or on your function, you would have that B value inside the parentheses with that cubed part. Then again, the negative, if it's inside the parentheses, so if we have a negative inside our parentheses, that's going to be a reflection over the y-axis. One thing you'll probably know, well, if I have negative x in parentheses cubed, that's the same thing as negative x cubed. And that's what we talk about, how this function is an odd function, how it has that origin symmetry. Um, because if you think about it, if I reflect this graph over the y or the x, it looks the same either way. And that's kind of a special property for the cubic function. All right, so let's look at some of our vertical transformations. Plus k is a shift up, minus k is a shift down. And both of these transformations would be outside the parentheses, away from the x. If it's in between 0 and 1, that is your vertical compression. If it's greater than 1, that is a vertical stretch, and those are multiplied. And again, this is multiplied outside the parentheses. Then if there's that negative outside, that would reflect over the x. And that would look like this on your equation. Now if we combine all these transformations together, it's going to be in this format right here. And notice again, we factor out that b value so that we can make sure it's just x minus h here. So it's easy to see your shifts. What that also does is it makes it easy to see the point of inflection. Because when your equation's in that form, the point of inflection is h, k, just like your vertex was for your quadratics. All right, now let's go ahead and sketch some of these graphs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the transformations. So this graph has gone right 3 and down 4. Well, since this graph has gone right 3 and down 4, that means the point of inflection has gone right 3 and down 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plot my point of inflection first. Then what we're going to do from this point, if you want to plug in points using a table of values, that works. Um, I'm going to follow the pattern that we've been using like we did for graphing quadratics. So remember, for quadratics, we looked at it in relation to the vertex. For cubic, we're going to look at it from the point of inflection. And then think about what the parent function did. Well, because 1 cubed is 1, I went right 1 and up 1. 2 cubed was 8, so I went right 2, up 8. I went left 1, down 1, and left 2, down 8. Since this graph has not been stretched or compressed or reflected in any way, that's the same way that I'm going to move from the point of inflection. So right 1, up 1. Right 2, up 8 is going to take me off my graph. It'll be up at 12. Left 1, down 1. And left 2, down 8. And that is going to be my cubic function. All right, domain. Um, on this one, negative infinity to infinity, and range is negative infinity to infinity. Increasing, decreasing, if we look left to right, the y values are getting larger, so this graph is increasing, and it's increasing from negative infinity to infinity on the entire graph. All right, let's go ahead and look at our next one. Let's start with our transformations. This graph has a vertical compression. It's gone left to and down 1, which means my point of inflection is negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plot my point of inflection, and then I'm going to find my pattern. So from the point of inflection, I typically go right 1, up 1, right 2, up 8, left 1, down 1, and left 2, down 8. But because this graph has been vertically compressed, I'm going to change the amount that I'm going up and down. So instead of going right one and up one, I'm going to go right one, up a half. 
Instead of right two up eight, I'm gonna go right two up four. Left one down one half, left two down four. And again, this is how I'm changing from the point of inflection. So right one up a half, right two up four. And that gives me enough points to sketch my graph. Again, domain and range, you're probably going to start seeing a pattern. There is nothing stopping the domain or the range. Now this one's asking for end behavior. So as x approaches negative infinity, what's y doing? And as x approaches positive infinity, what is y doing? Well, as x approaches negative infinity, my y's are getting smaller. As x approaches positive infinity, my y's are getting bigger. All right, let's look at a couple more. All right, so next one, again, pretty similar. Find our transformations. This graph has been reflected over the x-axis. It has a vertical stretch. And then this graph has been shifted down 1, because that minus 1, it's outside of the parentheses. It's not by the x cubed. So that means our point of inflection has not been changed horizontally, it's just shifted down one. So my point of inflection is zero, negative one. Look at our parent function pattern. So from the point of inflection, typically right one up one, right two up eight, left one down one, left two down eight. But what's changing is a vertical stretch and a reflection. So instead of going right one up one, I'm gonna go right one, Multiply that by negative 2. Multiply by negative 2. And multiply by negative 2. So I'm going to go right 1, down 2. Then I'm going to go right 2 and down 16. Now that's going to go way off my graph, but it gives you an idea of how much this graph is actually stretched. Left 1, up 2. And left 2, up 16, which again, way off my graph. That shows you just how narrow this graph actually is. As we look left to right, this graph is decreasing, and it is decreasing on its entire domain. All right, transformations on the next one. Before we look at our transformations on our next graph, um, we need to consider that this is not in our normal form we're looking at, because that negative right there needs to get factored out. So this is a really common mistake. Uh, we need to be careful finding our point of inflection. Your point of inflection is not negative 3, 1. Your point of inflection, the x-coordinate, should be the value you plug in for x to make this 0. And that, in this case, is not negative 3. So to rewrite this in our normal form, we talked about factoring out that b value. That includes the negative. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative. And if that gets factored out, I have x minus 3 cubed. So now that that negative is out, now it's clear to see your point of inflection, which is 3, 1. So this graph is reflected over the y-axis. This graph has gone right 3, and this graph has gone up 1. So we'll graph our point of inflection. We'll look at our pattern from the parent function. And how this graph has changed is the reflection over the x-axis, or reflection over the y, which changes our x-coordinate. We multiply those by negative. So now we're going left 1, up 1, left 2, up 8. Right 1, down 1, and right 2, down 8. And we have our cubic function. So you'll notice, again, the shape looks similar as if it's reflected over the x, um, it, just because that special property, the fact that, that parent function is odd. All right, so as x approaches negative infinity, we can see what y approaches. And as x approaches positive infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, our y's are getting bigger. As x approaches positive infinity, our y's are getting smaller.
All right, we'll do a couple more. Um, this next one, again, we need to consider that B value and factor that out. So that one-third, we're going to factor it out to make our point of inflection clear. So this would be the same thing as one-third. If one-third is divided out of one, I would be left with three because one divided by one-third is one times three. And I lost my x. So that's a different way to rewrite that problem. And again, you can still get the same graph, but your order of your transformations changes, and it's really hard to see your point of inflection. This way makes it very clear that your point of inflection is three, zero. Your point of inflection here is not one, zero. Transformations, the one third, remember, is a horizontal stretch, okay? It is backwards. And then this graph has gone right. Three. So three zero is my point of inflection. Again, we'll see how this has changed from the parent function. So typically from the point of inflection, we go right one up one, right two up eight, left one down one, left two down eight. But because of that one third, that is changing the x coordinates. We are multiplying the x's by 3. Again, it's backwards. So we are multiplying by 3. So I'm going to go right 3, up 1, right 6, up 8. Left 3, down 1, and left 6, down 8. And that is my horizontal uh, stretch on that graph. All right, this graph is increasing and it is increasing from negative infinity to infinity. All right, if you feel pretty comfortable, pause the video, try the next one on your own. All right, this graph has gone left four, down three, and has a vertical stretch by a factor of three. The point of inflection is negative 4, negative 3. And then how this graph has changed from that uh, point of inflection, our normal pattern. I'm going to multiply the y values by 3. So obviously I'm not going to be able to fit those 24 values on my graph. But from here, write 1 up 3. And you can see that's going to be a very skinny graph that's going up very quickly. And then end behavior, again, two statements. As x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches positive infinity, we're trying to see what y is doing. Negative infinity, my y is getting smaller. Positive infinity, my y is getting bigger. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to write the equation of the graph. Now, when it comes to writing these equations, the horizontal stretch or compression versus a vertical stretch or compression, you can write it either way. But sometimes it's easier based on the points that you have to write it a certain way. Um, so what we're going to do for these is we're going to assume that the B value is 1. What that means is we're going to assume there's no horizontal stretch or compression. There could be a vertical stretch or compression, but there's, we're going to assume there's no horizontal stretch or compression. If you want to write this graph with one, it is possible. Uh, but we're just going to try to do it that way. So I'm going to start by finding the point of inflection, which is 2, 4. So that's going to be part of my graph. I know it's going to go right 2 and up 4. Then we're going to see if has this graph been reflected, compressed, or stretched in any way from the parent function. Well, normally I go right 1 and up 1. Well, I didn't go right 1 and up 1 from the point of inflection. I went right 1 and down 1. So it's been reflected, but it has not been stretched or compressed in any way because I'm still following the same pattern of the parent function. So that means I need a negative out in front. It's going to be x minus 2 cubed and then plus 4 because of the location of my point of inflection. All right, looking at the next one, again, find your point of inflection. That's negative 3, negative 1. 
it, and then again, let's try and see how this has changed. I normally go right one and up one, but I didn't. I went up less, which means this graph has been compressed. Now, we can't tell exactly where that point is. It looks like it's about a half, but we don't know for sure. So let's check our next point. I normally go right two and up eight. Instead, I went right two and up one, two, three, four. Well, if I normally go up eight, but that distance was cut in half, and that distance was also cut in half here, that tells me this graph has a vertical compression. So this is going to be 1 half x plus 3 cubed minus 1. It has not been reflected because it has the same shape of your parent function. Now let's say you really couldn't find um, what that stretch or compression was. Another option is you could solve for this algebraically like how we did with quadratics. You could say y equals a x plus 3 cubed minus 1 and you could plug in your x and y value and you can solve for a that way uh, but that's just a little bit more algebra when it's we can look at if we can find it from the graph it's going to be a little bit easier for us All right, let's look at the next one. This time, we're going to write these with assuming that the A value is 1, and we're going to try and find a B value. All right, so that means we're going to try and find a horizontal stretch or compression. So looking at this first one, again, let's try and find the point of inflection, which is right here at 2, negative 2. This graph has not been reflected, uh, but this graph has been stretched horizontally. Normally, we go right 1 and up 1. But again, we're trying to see how it's changed horizontally. Well, if I normally go right 1, up 1, instead, I've gone right 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1. So this graph has a horizontal stretch by 4. What that means is in my equation, I'm going to have a 1 fourth as a b value. So this equation is going to be 1 fourth x minus 2 cubed minus 2. Again, 1 fourth is a horizontal stretch. All right, now looking at this last one, we know it's been reflected. Hopefully we can all see that. The point of inflection is 3, 0. So this is going to be, we don't know the b value. I'm just going to leave this b x minus 3 cubed, and then plus 0. So again, it's kind of hard to see. I normally, again, I normally go right 1 and up 1, but I didn't. I went right 1 and down a number that's kind of hard to see. So I've gone left 1 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, however much. So what I'm going to tell you guys here on this one, it's kind of hard to see. Um, this graph has gone over a half. So that point right there you can assume is over a half. Um, so since this graph has been horizontally compressed, by one half. The important thing to know here is that means that 2 is the number that's going to go in my graph here. And again, that's kind of hard to see on that one. Uh, it's not a great picture, but the important thing to remember is just the number that goes in the equation is opposite for those horizontal stretches and compressions. Now, if you wanted to, you actually could write this um, with a vertical stretch, and this is something we'll look at a little bit later. But think about this graph. With that 2 factored out like this, this is the same thing as 8 x minus 3 cubed. So that's actually the same function. Um, this does have a vertical stretch of 8 if you want to look at it that way. But again, it's kind of hard to see in this graph. We don't quite have enough space. Uh, but that's another way those are equivalent expressions. All right, so that is it for cubic functions. So next class, what we're going to do is we're going to look at just polynomial graphs in general um, and look at some things outside of just these cubic function transformations.